Hello, welcome back. If you're new here, I am Dr. Michael Park. I'm a dermatology resident physician. And today I'll be doing part one of my European sunscreen series. For this video, I'll be reviewing two face sunscreens, one that's non-tinted and one that's tinted. And before I start, a huge thank you to my friend Sam, who just got back from Europe and brought me these awesome sunscreens to try. So a brief outline, I'll first cover what makes European sunscreens different, go over the ingredients and overall texture and feel of the non-tinted bioderma sunscreen, do the same for the tinted ISDIN sunscreen, then compare differences of mineral-only filters to the more advanced UV filters available in Europe, and then wrap it all up and give you a preview for part two. So let's get into it. So the first part I wanna cover is why European sunscreens matter. So in the US, there are only 16 UV filters that are approved to be used in sunscreen. And unfortunately, the majority of these filters were approved in the 1970s to 1990s. They're like 20 year old technology. And the reason why there hasn't been any new UV filters approved in the last 20 years is because sunscreens in the US are considered over-the-counter drugs. And because of that label, there are stricter regulations, which makes approval for more filters more timely and expensive. Comparatively, in Europe, there are over 30 approved filters. In Europe, sunscreens are considered cosmetics. There are fewer regulations around them. And with these newer filters, they're not only better at blocking UV, but they're also more photostable and feel way more elegant on the skin. In the US, common UV filters that you'll see include avabenzone, oxybenzone, zone, octanoxate, octosalate, homosalate, and then the mineral sunscreens like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Versus in Europe, you'll see some of those same filters used, but also newer ones. And these include Tinosorb S, Uvisorb HEB, Uvinil A+, and Mexrel 400. Now the first European sunscreen that we test out is this Bioderma Photoderm Aqua Fluid Invisible SPF 50 Plus. Now this is SPF 50, which only designates the UVB protection, but it's also PA++++, so four pluses. And that designates the level of UVA protection. Now I've only seen sunscreens go up to four plus for UVA protections, so I think that could be the max, but I need to double check on that. So what is in the sunscreen that makes it so special? In terms of UV filters, like the components that actually protect you from the sun, there are four UV filters in here. The first one is called Uvisorb HEB. This filter, as you could probably guess, is for UVB protection. What's special about this filter compared to the filters available in the United States is that it is able to achieve adequate UVB protection at lower concentrations. So because they have to use less of the filter in the formula, there's a higher chance of having a more elegant, like lighter formulation. The second filter is called Uvinyl A+. As you could guess by the name, this is for UVA protection, particularly UVA1, which goes up to 400 nanometers. What's special about this filter is that it's very photostable, which is a fancy way of saying is that it won't break down or degrade as fast as other UVA filters. The chemical UVA filter that's commonly used in the US is avabenzone, and compared to avabenzone, it's much more stable. The third filter is Tinosorb S. This filter protects against UVB and UVA, and it also helps stabilize the other UV filters within this formula. And the last filter that's used is avabenzone, which like I mentioned before, is also available in the US. And similar to Uvinyl A+, avabenzone also protects against UVA. And you might be asking why have avabenzone for UVA coverage if you already have Uvinyl A+, which is a great question. And the short answer is that they cover different parts of the UVA spectrum. Avabenzone covers the 360 to 370 nanometer range, whereas the Uvinyl A plus filter extends closer to the 400 nanometer range. So it basically helps give you broader UVA protection across the spectrum. And like I mentioned before, since avabenzone is fairly unstable, having the Uvinyl A plus in there helps stabilize avabenzone, helping it last longer. So this is my first time trying this on camera, so this will be my actual first impression. So, oh, ooh. Overall, the texture is pretty light. I'll put it on my face in a second, but as you can see on my hand, it's a pretty thin, I would say liquid lotion fluid. It has a little funky smell to it, but not anything that's too off-putting in my opinion. So I was trying to decide to do this, if I was gonna do, like, do half and half or just like one or the other, but I think I'll put apply this all over my face and then wipe it off and then try the other one. My poor skin. So let's apply this. Okay, so pretty liquidy. But really glides nicely over the skin. Again, it has a little bit of a scent to it, but nothing too off-putting. Go this side. Okay, and then the forehead. It's hard for me to do this on camera because the screen on this camera is tiny. Like overall, just spreading it, it spreads really easily. And I can tell that it's just making this nice even layer across my skin. Initial impression, it does feel a little bit greasy, especially compared to some of the Korean sunscreens that I've used. But if it's water resistant, that makes sense. Because a lot of my favorite Korean sunscreens that are more of like a, a light lotion texture, they're not water resistant. Why are my sebaceous filaments coming out? Okay, I don't know why this is happening, but um, 
I'm noticing some of my like sebaceous filaments are coming out. I was like noticing some grittiness on my nose and I'm like, oh, that is definitely like a filament. Huh. Okay, so initial impression, this has been on for a little bit. It does feel a little bit greasy, I'm not gonna lie. Kind of oily, if that makes sense. Like if I was going to the beach or something and wearing this to the beach, like whatever, because I'm already outside. But as someone who runs more oily, would this be my daily sunscreen? No. But in terms of it being thick or leaving a white cast, like as you can see, none of that. And I'm gonna give it another minute to dry down to see if that kind of greasy feeling goes away. But on the bottle, it says moisturizing, ultralight texture, and dry touch. I would not call this dry touch. So I've let this sit on my face for another five minutes and that greasy feeling has mostly subsided, I would say. And again, it's definitely not as light as some of those lotion texture Korean sunscreens. But again, this is water resistant. And another thing on here, it says eye tolerance and I did get a little bit in my eye and it burned. <laughs> And I know that sunscreen burning the eyes, it is pretty subjective. Like some burn certain people's eyes, others don't burn certain people's eyes. But I did get a little bit in my eye and it did burn. So just something I would be aware of. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe this off as best as I can and then come back to try the other sunscreen out. Okay, so I ended up just washing my face off because I want this to be a fair test. And since it was water resistant, I didn't feel like wiping it was actually gonna get it off. So I guess my face is just gonna get an extra wash today. So the second sunscreen is this Istin Photo Protector Fusion Water Magic Medium Face Sunscreen, and this one's tinted. This is also SPF 50 PA++++, so four pluses. All right, so what does this one have in it? So starting off, we have octocrylene and ethyl hexyl salicylate. And both of these are UVB filters that are also available in the US. Next is avabenzone, which I mentioned before, and that is a UVA filter. We also have insulazole and polysilicone 15, which are UVB filters. These are also available in the US. So, so far the sunscreen has filters in it that are available in the US as well. But like the Bioderma one, it also has Tinazorb S. And like I mentioned before, Tinazorb S is a broad spectrum filter, so both UVA and UVB. And its presence is gonna help stabilize the other UV filters in there, especially avabenzone. And unlike the other one, this also has mineral components to it like titanium dioxide and also iron oxides which give it its tint. Iron oxides are important because they block against visible light, especially blue light that can worsen hyperpigmentation. All right, we'll get all zoomed in here. Hello. So does have a really fluid texture. You can see it kind of just drop in there. And the color I think matches my hand well, but we'll see how it looks on my face. Oh, it is fragrance, so that's definitely some points against it. Like, I don't really care if it smells a little funky without the fragrance, as long as it doesn't give me an allergic reaction, right? All right, so let's put it on this cheek first. See how it spreads, okay. Oh, that's really nice. Such a lightweight fluid consistency. Hmm, the fragrance is like clean laundry. Oh, okay, and then forehead. I got a pimple. Spread it around. I like this texture so far, we'll see. Okay, so far the finish on this one is really nice compared to the Bioderma one. It's much lighter, it's really not greasy. It's drying down so quickly and I think pretty evenly. The one thing about this is that this is really heavy coverage for me. Like I can already tell in my hands that this is like makeup. And my lips too are just like caked up. I swear this video is gonna haunt me. They're gonna like screenshot it from my grave. Okay, I just had to look in the mirror because it's hard for me to see the actual finish on camera, but I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Now I'm not a makeup wearer, so this is a lot more coverage than I would typically want out of a tinted sunscreen. If I had to put it on a spectrum from like low coverage to high coverage, low being like, I think the Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer has a really like sheer coverage that's light versus like the Color Science Flex has super heavy coverage where it's almost like a foundation. If this was the spectrum, I would put this one like here where I don't think it has quite as much coverage as like the Color Science Flex, but like, I think I look pretty caked up. I would say in terms of the tinted sunscreens that I've used that have heavier coverage, this is probably the best feeling one. I think it was super easy to apply. The consistency and the formulation just made it glide over the skin really easily. It definitely points against it for the fragrance. I can still smell it on my face. And I can feel it a little bit already and see it that this would definitely transfer to white clothing if you weren't careful. But kudos, I'm really impressed, really impressed. Okay, so just between these two in terms of texture and feel, 
The overall winner is this one for sure. Compared to this one, I would say this one definitely felt more oily. And in terms of dry down time, this one just blew this one out of the water and took less time for me to stop feeling like I had something on my skin, if that makes sense. Even now I can tell a little bit, but for this one, I had to wait at least like five, probably closer to seven minutes for it to feel even a little bit normal on top of my skin. I'm also curious to try the non-tinted version of this, but I'm just more prone to dark spots, hyperpigmentation. So I try to use a tinted sunscreen. Before I wrap up, I just want to say a quick note about mineral sunscreens. So mineral sunscreens are broad spectrum, like zinc oxide covers both UVA and UVB. And a lot of people prefer mineral only sunscreens because they have less chemicals in them, which is a whole different discussion. But from a dermatology point of view, I often see mineral sunscreens being recommended for people with sensitive skin because we do see occasional irritation or allergy to these chemical UV filters in these other sunscreens. So the reason why a lot of people, including myself, prefer often a chemical sunscreen over a mineral sunscreen is truly just about the feel and the finish of the product. In order to get adequate UV protection with mineral sunscreens, the concentration of those compounds has to be fairly high in the formula. This in the past, has meant that the formulas are typically chalky, they leave a white cast and are just really not elegant. I will say recently I've used some mineral only sunscreens that are phenomenal. I think a lot of these companies have made some great advancements in terms of formulation to make these mineral sunscreens feel more elegant on the face. But that being said, people with darker skin tones, even with the newer formulations, will probably end up having a white cast on their face when applying an appropriate amount of mineral sunscreen because honestly that's just kind of the nature of zinc oxide. So to close, what I recommend either of these sunscreens. Starting with a non tinted one, I would say probably not. Yes, it has more advanced UV filters in here that aren't available in the US, but I would say overall, I was pretty disappointed in the texture, especially given that it has the new filters in it, which theoretically should make it more cosmetically elegant. I'll definitely use this for outdoor activities, like for swimming or being outside, hiking, running, when the finish and feel is less important, but this will not be like my daily driver sunscreen. And for the tinted is in sunscreen, would I recommend this? I would say, yeah. I love the overall texture, application, feel of this, dried down quickly and its overall finish is really good. My only knocks against this is that for me personally, it's just more coverage than I typically would wear for a tinted sunscreen. And what I mean is that it's more foundation-like than just like a sunscreen. And the second knock on here is the fragrance, like I said before. And this is coming from a dermatology perspective where we see contact allergies to fragrance pretty frequently. And so it's just another ingredient that I think is unnecessary that could possibly irritate someone's skin. Fingers crossed that we get some new UV filters approved in the US because the newer filters not only offer better protection or more stable, but they're also more cosmetically elegant. But in the meantime, I will just be relying on some nice occasional gifts from my friends. And of course you can order these and also Korean sunscreens online. Because there's just the shipping aspect, which increases costs and you have to wait a while. So that's it for my part one of my European sunscreen series. I'm still pretty new to the YouTube space. So please like this video and subscribe because it really helps me out. I also have an Instagram page where I post more short form content. And that handle is the same as this one at dr.michaelpark. And be sure to stay tuned for my next video where I'll be going over different European body sunscreens and how they compare. Thanks for watching.